Welcome to a review and preview of trig identities. In grade 11, you proved the following trig identities. The Pythagorean identity, which is sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, which is also equal to cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta, if you isolate for cos squared, or sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta, if you isolate for sine squared. Next, we have the quotient identity, which is tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta. And finally, your reciprocal identities, which are secant, cosecant, and cotangent of theta. Note for cotangent, we can have it as cosine over sine, but it's also equal to 1 over tan theta. How do you prove identities? You try to make the more complicated side look like the less complicated side, in most cases. So different ways you can do that is using an identity, like the ones given above. You can try to factor the expression, expand, use a common denominator, or multiply by one creatively. And we'll look at an example of that later. Finally, using any of those methods, always ensure you simplify your result. And if the two sides are not equal, try again. So let's prove the following identities starting with secant theta equals tan theta cosecant theta. So in this example, I would choose the right side. So please indicate that's the side you're focused on. I'd also recommend writing out what side you're focused on. So we're focused on tan theta cosecant theta. You should also then explain what identities you're going to use. So let's say for this one, I'm going to use the fact that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta, or you can say you're using the quotient identity, and I'm going to use the reciprocal identity, cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. Then you can show your work. So tan theta is sine theta over cosine theta, and then times 1 over sine theta. Notice we have a sine theta in the top and in the bottom, so we can cancel those. And now we're left with 1 over cosine theta. Once again, we can use another identity. So we can use the fact that 1 over cosine theta is equivalent to secant theta. So notice that the right side equals secant theta, which is equal to the left side. So you can say, therefore, left side equals right side. Or you can just write the letters Q, E, D, that which has been demonstrated. And you're done. Let's try the next one. So this one, because I have a fraction on the left side, I'm going to start with the left side. So the left side is equal to sine squared theta minus sine theta over secant theta. So for this one, I'm going to start by using a reciprocal identity. I'm going to use the fact that secant theta is equal to 1 over cosine theta. So I get sine squared theta minus sine theta divided by 1 over cos theta. Here we're just going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I get sine squared theta minus sine theta cosine theta. I can now expand the right side, or we can stay to the left side and take out a common factor of sine theta, and I'm left with sine theta minus cosine theta. And notice that's equal to the right side. So now we're done. And I only needed one identity for this example. Let's go to the next example. Clearly the left side is more complex, so we can start there but you're more than welcome to also start from the right side. So I have sine theta times sine theta plus cos squared theta over sine theta. I don't need an identity to start this one, but I do need to find a common denominator. I'm going to multiply the first term sine theta by sine theta and divide it by sine theta. So that gives me sine theta times sine times sine is sine squared theta, and then we have the cos squared theta, 
all over our denominator sine theta. First off, we can cancel the sine thetas. And secondly, we can now use an identity. We can use our Pythagorean identity. And that is that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. That's this right here. So what are we left with? We're left with 1. And now we have proven the following identity. So let's look at ones that are a little bit more complex. So again, let's pick a side. And you should be able to solve from both sides. I would choose the left side for this example. Notice the right side only has sine theta. So I got to get everything in terms of sine. And the problem is we have a cos squared. But again, we can use the Pythagorean identity and the version where cos squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. So now we have 1 minus sine squared theta over 1 plus sine theta. If we think of this in terms of quadratics, that is 1 minus x squared over 1 plus x, if we replace the sine theta by x. The numerator is a difference of squares, 1 minus x and 1 plus x, all over 1 plus x. And notice, we're going to get to 1 minus x, which is our goal, 1 minus sine. So all we need to do is to finish this. So 1 minus sine squared is 1 minus sine theta times 1 plus sine theta, using our difference of squares formula, over 1 plus sine theta. We can now cancel the following factors. And we're left with 1 minus sine theta, which is equivalent to the right side. Next one. Again, in this one, I would choose the left side to start. So that's 1 plus cosecant theta. Let's use an identity. So we're going to use the fact that cosecant theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. Or you can just state that you're using a reciprocal identity. So we get 1 plus 1 over sine theta. We need a common denominator. So I'm going to take the 1 and multiply it by sine theta and divide by sine theta to get our common denominator. So I get sine theta plus 1 over sine theta. That one's easier than I thought. And we're done. We now showed that the left side is equal to the right side. And finally, let's look at a more complex one. So I would start with the right side. There's several ways to prove this. One way is to use the reciprocal identity cotan of theta is equal to 1 over tan of theta. So this gives you 1 plus 1 over tan of theta over 1 plus tan of theta. Next is to get a common denominator in the numerator. So this is going to be tan theta over tan theta. And this gives me tan theta plus 1 over tan theta and then over 1 plus tan of theta. So again, this is the numerator. There's the denominator. Next step is to flip and multiply. So this is going to give us tan theta plus 1 over tan theta times 1 over 1 plus tan of theta. Notice that these factors are the same. Tan theta plus 1 is the same as 1 plus tan theta. They cancel. We're left with 1 over tan theta. And using one of our reciprocal identities, we know that 1 over tan theta is equal to cotan theta. And so we have that the right side is equal to cotangent of theta, which is equivalent to the left side. So therefore, left side is equal to right side. And we're done. Just a reminder, there's multiple ways to do this. We can convert it everything to sine and cos. Or we could have taken the tan theta and converted it to 1 over cotan which might have reduced this by a couple lines.
So there are many approaches, but you always know what answer you're looking for in the end. And final example. Prove that sine theta equals tan theta plus cos squared theta is not an identity. So remember, an identity is an equation that is true for all values of the variable. So how can you prove an equation is not an identity? Take a value, sub it in, and prove that the left side does not equal the right side. So for example, let's take that theta is equal to pi over 4. So again, no calculator. So let's start with the left side. The left side is equal to sine of pi over 4. And using your special triangles, that would be 1 over root 2. Now let's go to the right side. Using that same angle, I get tan of pi over 4 plus cosine of pi over 4 all squared. The tan of pi over 4 is 1. The cosine of pi over 4 is 1 over root 2, and we're going to square that. And we get 1 plus 1 half, which is clearly not equal to 1 over root 2. So therefore, left side does not equal the right side. And we've proven this is not an identity. They will be equal for some theta, but not for all theta in the domain. Here are the questions I recommend you try. And then, once you've tried those, I'd like you to tell me, of the six functions we've focused on, sine, cos, tan, secant, cosecant, cotangent, which of these functions are odd and which of these functions are even. Good luck.